For the next half hour, our panel of political experts, who you can see here, will tell us what to expect in the hours ahead. We will also analyze the latest poll numbers, look at what turnout could look like, and show you the hot precincts to watch for this evening. But first, tonight, we will introduce you to our experts. Jeff Link is our Democratic analyst. He has decades of experience in government and politics. Link is the founder of Link Strategies, a political communications firm. Eric Wilson is our Republican analyst. He has more than 40 years of experience in Iowa journalism, pu public relations, and politics. Wilson is the founder of The Concept Works, a Des Moines area communications firm. Dennis Goldford has been KCCI's chief political analyst for 30 years. He's been a professor of political science at Drake University since 1985. Goldford has even co-authored a book about the Iowa caucuses. Here's another familiar face, Kathy Obradovich. She's the editor-in-chief of the website Iowa Capital Dispatch. She has covered Iowa government and politics for more than 30 years, including leading the award-winning coverage of the Des Moines Register's Iowa poll. And now the candidates. There are 11 Democrats, Michael Bennett, Joe Biden, Michael Bloomberg, Pete Buttigieg, Tulsi Gabbard. Also Amy Klobuchar, Deval Patrick, Bernie Sanders, Tom Steyer, Elizabeth Warren, and Andrew Yang. 17 Democrats dropped out before making it to the Iowa caucuses. There are three Republicans in this race as well. They include President Trump, Joe Walsh, and Bill Weld. One Republican dropped out before making it to the Iowa caucuses. Here's a look at the latest poll results going into tonight's caucuses. The CBS News Battleground Tracker Iowa poll just released yesterday has Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders tied for first at 25 percent support. Pete Buttigieg is in third with 21 percent, followed by Elizabeth Warren with 16 and Amy Klobuchar with five. No other candidate received at least five percent in this poll. Now we turn to our analysts, and we are going to find out what these numbers mean. All right, uh, Which, Den Dennis? It still looks like a dead heat at this point. Mm -hmm. uh, or I should say perhaps more accurately, there's a cluster of front runners. That's been the case for quite some time. The question is whether the caucuses tonight will begin to separate any of them or just keep them as a cluster. Okay, uh, Kathy, what do you see? Yeah, so first of all, I think poll numbers uh, can be a little bit misleading going to the, into the caucuses because the campaigns have to have the ground game to, to back that up. And some can campaigns, uh, you know, I think could actually perform ahead of their poll numbers. Uh, Amy Klobuchar is one uh, that I would expect uh, to see do better than that particular poll. Um, and some may not live up to the poll numbers that they have. And so that's why we have the caucuses. We'll find out. Okay, Jeff? Well, a lot of what's going on tonight is expectation setting and whether candidates meet expectations, exceed expectations, or fall a little bit short. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see since the race has been uh, so tight, it's going to be an interesting uh, to see just how, how it shakes out because it's plausible that any of these top four candidates could finish first, and it's just as plausible that any of them could finish fourth. Okay, and Eric, you do have Biden and uh, Sanders tied with 25%, but it's not, all, that's first choice. This, uh, exactly. year, this time around, we're talking about second choice being very important. Yeah, and I, I think Kathy makes a great point about the organizations, whether they exceed their expectations or not. I, I think we're going to see Sanders uh, put some distance between a few of the other candidates based on the enthusiasm that he has. But as we talk about first choice, second choice, uh, those, those candidates that aren't viable, uh, those folks have been working very hard to decide who their second choice is going to be. And I've talked to a number of folks who have tried to decide whether it's going to be Buttigieg or Biden or Biden or Buttigieg. So you're going to see that sort of movement, I think, as well. Okay. It's going to be a very interesting evening. Now, Republican parties in several states have canceled their primaries to clear the way for President Trump to automatically become the GOP nominee. But here in Iowa, Republicans will make their preferences tonight. Just last week, President Trump attracted thousands of people to a campaign rally at Drake University's Knapp Center. And dozens of Trump surrogates are on the ground right now. They're garnering support for the president. We can likely expect a dominating performance from the president tonight in the caucuses, but after the caucuses, how important do you think this state will be for him, Eric? 
Uh, it's going to be a very important state uh, this fall. It was, it was uh, very important to the last cycle. Uh, as, as Jeff and Dennis and Kathy will tell you, we're not red, we're not blue, we're sort of purple right now. We go back and forth between the two parties. Uh, and so it's going to be, I, I think uh, there's going to be a very intense uh, campaign uh, come the general election. Okay, and Kathy, when it comes to uh, the entire electoral map, geography is very important. Iowa has six electoral votes. Six can make a difference. Yeah, it can when you put it together with other really important Midwestern states that are also swing states. So, you know, if you put us with Ohio and, and Wisconsin and Pennsylvania and, and those other states as a block uh, that anybody who's going to win the presidency really has to win. Uh, Iowa, as Eric said, um, does go back and forth. And it's, it's about more than just the six electoral votes. It's really about trying to put together that uh, coalition of battleground states. Dennis, is, is Iowa still a battleground state? Well, you know, it was interesting um, as we looked at things uh, developing during a 2016 con uh, campaign, Iowa had gone Democratic for president every year from 1988 to 2012, except for 2004. Yet we knew by the end of September of 2016 that Iowa would go for Donald Trump. That should have been a signal to Democrats that something was happening out there and they needed to pay attention to it. They didn't pay attention to it in 2016. Are they paying attention to it this year? Okay, Jeff, do you see a signal on the Democratic side in 2020? I think so. I think uh, Dennis is absolutely right. Uh, the Democrats ignored particularly rural Iowa in 2016, and they didn't even come close to meeting where Barack Obama was in 2012 in that 2016 election. And I think what we've seen in this caucus is Democrats have been traveling around to rural counties. Uh, they've been meeting, they've put out rural plans, almost 15 of them have put out rural plans. So there is a concerted effort to go after these voters and, and to re-engage with people who voted for Obama twice and Trump in this last election. Uh, you know, there's a bunch of smart people in Washington that say right off Iowa, it's not gonna matter. But we've had 20 candidates in this state for a year talking to people throughout the state. That has an impact that will carry over into November. Okay, well, a large number of Iowans are likely lining up to caucus tonight and make wow. themselves heard. Iowa Democratic <laughs> Party expecting a record turnout. In Polk County alone, party leaders expect a 30% increase from 2016. The Iowa Republican Party is not expecting a large turnout tonight since President Trump is seeking re-election. Nevertheless, Iowa Republicans have been preparing for this for more than a year. If the turnout production <coughs> Excuse me, if the turnout projection holds, what does that mean for the Iowa Democrats? Could it lead to an increase in turnout in other early primary states? Jeff, what do you think? Uh, look, Donald Trump is the greatest turnout uh, invigorator for Democrats that, that we've seen. Both ways. Uh, both ways, absolutely. He, he turns out his base and he turns out the Democratic base. Uh, we saw this in 2018. We had terrific turnout on both sides. I think we're going to see a big turnout in part because we've had a lot of campaigns that are highly organized. I think we're going to see a big turnout because uh, people, people want to send a message that they're ready to, to replace Donald Trump. Okay, Dennis, uh, you normally uh, are, are looking at specific counties. You're looking at specific Iowa counties tonight, or um, is it just uh, too much to, to try and figure out from that perspective? There, there's a lot, but you know, if, if in fact <coughs> Democrats are going to energize, particularly those younger cohorts, uh, you want to look at places like uh, Story County and Johnson County, and indeed a lot of the uh, uh, urban areas where you have a lot of millennials and, young, and younger than that. But also, um, again, as we've seen, that uh, some candidates like Buttigieg and others have gone to rural areas in an attempt to say that Democrats have something to tell you, would you be willing to listen? So we want to see how these particular candidates do in those more rural counties. Okay, and uh, the suburbs, Kathy, are supposed to be really big this time around. Yeah, and I think that, uh, first of all, you want to look at how the women are voting in the suburbs uh, and whether they are voting for the women on the, on the caucus ballot. So uh, will Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar, for example, um, do better in suburbs than they do uh, elsewhere around the state. I definitely would be looking for that. Okay, and well, Eric, uh, as, yeah. as Dennis has said, it's not just the turnout, but who turns out, that being the young people, of course. And anecdotally, I've got a friend that's going to be at one of the West Des Moines Republican precincts, and he is going to be uh, encouraging uh, Republicans to vote for Nikki Haley. 
saying that uh, as a young uh, Republican, he was energized by Ronald Reagan, and mm -hmm. that uh, President Trump uh, has not uh, really appealed much to the 30 and under crowd. Uh, and that uh, he makes the argument that maybe it's time to, uh, uh, he, not saying anything against the president, he's simply saying it's, it's time to look uh, to Nikki Haley or to someone else who will attract those young voters because he's, he said he's not concerned about this election, he's concerned about the next six or eight or ten elections where we have to hold on to the state house, we have our congressional races, we have our senate races, and we need to appeal to, uh, to, appeal to younger voters. Okay, so does that mean that uh, President Trump could be a turnout machine not only for Democrats but for uh, uh, Republicans who oppose President Trump? Well, I think he's, you know, I, it's going to be near unanimous, obviously, for the for the president tonight with the uh, with the Republican caucuses. And uh, you know, I had a, a, a text from a friend up in Fort Dodge. They've got a uh, central location for their caucuses, but but at six o'clock, he said we've already got a hundred people here in in Fort Dodge. So I think there is going to be some enthusiasm for the president tonight. Obviously, our turnout's not going to be anything like the the Democrats. We're the sideshow tonight. We know that. Uh, but uh, but I, I think we're going to see. Uh, maybe some more folks out there than we expected, but you are, I am going to be interested in seeing these, you know, uh, little stories here and there, these vignettes about who's supporting somebody other than the president and why. Okay. Thank you very much, all of you. Next, in KCCI's Commitment 2020 special coverage tonight, a new way to caucus this year. We'll take you inside one of the first satellite caucus locations to see how this whole process works. And here's a live look at the caucus side at Des Moines Lincoln High School on the south side. The action will get started there and everywhere else across the state of Iowa in just about 15 minutes. New this year for the Democrats, Hardy's original Beyond Thick Burger Patties, 100% plant-based.
Well, new this year for Democrats, dozens of satellite caucus sites around Iowa, the country, and She's even so the amazing. world. This is video from a site in Paris earlier today. The goal is to give more people access to the caucus process. KCCI's Tommy Clark is at Drake University to show us how this whole thing works. Well, right now we're at what's being touted as one of the most accessible caucuses in the Iowa Democratic Party's history. We're here at the Drake Fieldhouse and you can see that things are underway. We have a big Bernie crowd here. People have been going to the various spots as to who they want to caucus for. So the goal tonight is for it to be as accessible as possible with this first ever satellite caucus. This is one of many Democratic satellite caucuses happening around the state and around the world. But for people who may not be able to attend their own in-person precinct caucus, and at the Drake Fieldhouse, the precinct chair tells me 140 people signed up. We have about half that here. Take a listen to what people are saying. Well, I originally signed up because I actually have a lecture um, during the original caucus period. Um, so this was just a great opportunity for me to still have um, an opportunity to caucus and get involved in that. Well, obviously a busy environment here and they have a regular caucus following here at the Fieldhouse. They're expecting about 500 people. Well, for now, I'm Tommy Clark at the Drake Fieldhouse. Back to you. Thank you very much, Tommy. Since uh, the satellite caucuses, some of them have already taken place, we already have some results coming in. This is after the second and final alignment. These are the total numbers of the uh, satellite caucus vote so far. Amy Klobuchar uh, wins with the satellite caucus goers so far with 32% of the vote, followed by Pete Buttigieg and then uh, Joe Biden and Bernie Sanders. So we'll keep tabs on that and keep those numbers uh, rolling for you. So, of course, the goal of these satellite sites is to help more people get to the caucuses. Jeff, do you think this addition will have any sort of impact on the outcome of tonight's? Um... I do. I do. I think, you know, we have almost 90 satellite sites uh, within the state, uh, around the United States and in a few of these foreign locations. And I think that's a that's a real plus. Uh, one of the goals after 2016 was to find a way to make the caucuses more accessible and more transparent. Uh, the Iowa Democratic Party wanted to do a telephone version and that didn't quite work out so they settled on this satellite program and it looks like people are, are showing up and, and utilizing the satellite caucuses. Okay, and Dennis, this impacts turnout. Turnout's the name of the game. You know, as I've said for years, if in real estate, the three most important factors are location, location, and location. In electoral politics, it's turnout, turnout, turnout. Um, again, the, uh, the Clinton folks in uh, 2016 didn't get the turnout, especially in the areas that they should have. That's what cost them of the election. So it's always about turnout. The Trump campaign this year is hoping to turn out. They believe they have two million likely Trump voters across the country who did not vote last time. They're counting on turning those people out in 2020. Okay, Dennis, thank you very much. Thank you to you all. Well, up next here on our continuing coverage of the Iowa caucuses, the precincts to watch tonight. Here's a live look at ADM Middle School in Adel. Certain locations may be able to give us kind of an early idea of how this caucus night could turn out. Weeknights, we focus on what matters to you at 9 on Meet.
So our analysts have been watching Iowa politics for decades. They know the political makeup of the state like few others do. And Kathy, I want to start with you. Are there any specific precincts you're watching for, any specific candidates tonight? Well, I would like to see how Joe Biden does in Dubuque uh, in particular. Uh, he has spent a lot of time there uh, courting, especially the Catholic vote in Dubuque, heavily Catholic County. And uh, so I think if he does not do well in Dubuque, that will be a bad sign for him around the state. Okay, Eric, we have what, just a little more than five minutes before things get started here. Mm -hmm. You have run successful uh, caucus campaigns. What are the campaigns feeling, the candidates feeling right now? Uh, a lot of anxiety. Uh, have we done everything we could? We know we haven't done everything that we could. And you know, are the people uh, that we're counting on to turn folks out going to show up, going to do their job. Okay, Eric, thank you very much. And we'll be right back with much more of our continuing caucus coverage right after this. The winner of Survivor Heroes vs. Villains, Sandra. Well, the minutes are ticking down. Iowans are just moments away from starting the caucus process for 2020. Yeah, and the doors are just about to open at Des Moines Lincoln High School on the south side. You can see folks uh, getting signed in there. This is a live look inside the roundhouse down there at Lincoln, and we understand there are as many as five uh, caucus sites in that particular building. So uh, Lincoln, a very, very busy place tonight. Well, our Republican political analyst has a unique caucus perspective that few can understand. That's right. In 2008, Eric Wilson ran Governor Mike Huckabee's winning Iowa caucus Republican campaign. And Eric, uh, what kinds of things have you carried away from that victory? That it's always the candidate. You know, the staff likes to take a lot of credit for, for winning. You know, we find a lot in our business that, uh, you know, when a candidate loses, the, cult, the consultant says we had a terrible candidate. And when the candidate wins, he says, you know, I did it in spite of the consultant or, uh, you know, so uh, I, I think uh, probably the best lesson to take away is, is it is a, a team sport. You've got to have a good candidate. You've got to have a good ground organization. You've got to have a good message. And you've got to have good volunteers, too. All right. Thank you, Eric. Well, as always, you can count on KCCI Eat News all night long for caucus results just as soon as they are available. Coming up right at 7 o'clock, we start our live team coverage and will remain on the air until the winners are declared. You can watch us on TV, on KCCI.com, online, and on our KCCI mobile app.